Hi, so glad you were all able to make it today. Thank you. Um, my name is Elizabeth Wallace. I'm a doctoral student in the Community and Regional Planning Program. Today I'll be talking about uh, the potential of a forgotten field of home ecology to help us with environmental justice challenges today. Many of us would like to see a world in which everyone had access to a healthy home environment with clean air, water, and food, in which we could reach our fullest potential. Unfortunately, the design of our built environments, of our homes, and our habits in them lead to environmental burdens at many scales. And uh, worse, those affect uh, the disadvantaged, and especially uh, people of color and children especially, uh, more than others. Uh, we've seen rises in obesity, asthma, and other environmental health diseases that are related to the way that we live. The problems, these problems lack a silver bullet solution, large part because homes are complex social, ecological, and technical systems. Uh, as such, technical so solutions alone, or in in individual solutions, are insufficient in, in addressing the interrelated challenges of these homes. It's interesting and important to note that in its early history, Home environmental science research took a very holistic approach known as home ecology. The story of home ecology begins in the late 1800s when Ellen Swallow Richards, a pioneering chemist, sanitary, sanitary en engin engineer, and MIT professor, and a social activist, worked to improve life in the industrial cities of her age. Looking out in those cities, she observed three critical challenges. First, she observed that there were uh, deplorable living conditions. Food, air, and water were greatly contaminated. Second, she saw that women were isolated in their homes uh, with little access to higher education. And then she also observed a general lack of experimental science education, which she thought was in, made it impossible for the nation to advance. Her strong observational capacity helped her see how these problems were interrelated. She established the field of oikology, or home ecology, as a way to holistically address them. So, home ecology has a number of key defining characteristics. It's transdisciplinary in that it engages scholars from a range of disciplines, along with non-academic partners in applied research. It employs systems thinking to address interrelated, interrelated problems in complex urban environments. It's multi-scalar in that it investigates food, air, and water at the scale from the household to the region. This research occurred in the lab above her her state-of-the-art lab at MIT uh, and out in the field. It also happened in, the, in homes of women in study circles all across the country where she'd sent microscopes and conducted an ongoing research network as shown sort of over here. Uh, Richard simultaneously built new knowledge and a social movement that was capable of implementing it through these learning networks. As a result, home ecology had many improvements for the urban environments of that time. Uh, the, her research led to establishment of building codes and new urban sanitary systems, and she was able to expand experimental science education in America's high schools and expand uh, education for women. Unfortunately, the empowering field of home ecology ultimately became home economics as it was institutionalized in American high schools, uh, far from an empowering education like what she sought to establish. Additionally, some of the technical solutions ended up moving environmental burdens generated by cities away, in a way too often meant in someone else's backyard. Benefits of home ecology, um, the model has the potential to really advance science, uh, come up with creative solutions to our current problems, build network power that's capable to drive action with effective results. Of course, there are a lot of uh, challenges around this type of research. Uh, participatory involvement is time consuming, and there are often conflicts among stakeholders from a variety of different perspectives. So what does this have to do with UT and where we are today? Uh, first, uh, home ecology emphasizes the science of sustainability can't be separated from the critical ethical challenges. Stay tuned for David Frank as he talks about the importance of ethics research and sustainability. Second, home ecology challenges us to lead interdisciplinary action and research and service learning related to self-help housing and community improvement, remaking our relationships with each other and the earth while learning and innovating together. 
Uh, both Christopher Rosales and Elizabeth Fenner in this panel will address those themes as well with projects that they're undertaking. Personally, as a doctoral student and a volunteer with the Austin Housing Repair Coalition, the principles of home ecology guide the way that I frame my research and approach action. My research efforts have involved colleagues from different disciplines as well as community partners such as One House at the Time, a project of the nonprofit organization A Nurtured World. Together, these par partners submitted two transdisciplinary fun, uh, research proposals to HUD to study the impacts of uh, weatherization in low-income people's homes in terms of health and energy impacts. Although it wasn't funded, those relationships developed in that process uh, feed into my dissertation research now. Uh, a little bit about One House at a Time. It is itself, in many ways, a model of home ecology. Uh, it uses volunteer teams to provide weatherization and repair services to low-income families' homes. Led by skilled professionals, these teams enable volunteers to learn new technologies and new habits that they can then adopt in their own homes. As volunteers make commitments about what they'll do in their own home, uh, One House actually follows up with them. They have a really performance-based program that helps people learn and adapt and uh, make their homes live up to what they would like them to be. Um, Home ecology also encourages national learning networks. And it's always a good idea for UT to keep its eye out on the competition or other collaborators. At the University of Florida, an initiative called Neutral Gator started in 2008 to meet the challenge of offsetting all of the athletic department's carbon footprint. Their motto is leaving footprints on the competition, not on the environment. Neutral Gator funds and implements low carbon reduction Low carbon reduction to lower carbon reduction projects through weatherization and tree planting. Um, and they claim that they've created the first UT, or UF athletic season to be, uh, to be carbon neutral uh, since 2008. As Merrick McHugh's presentation had underscored, UT athletics is already leading the way uh, through their direct projects, but there may be opportunities to work with One House to be able to take that even further. In conclusion, home ecology has been a greatly useful framework for myself, and if we can all look first where we are and adjust the relationships we have with people around us and our home, we can start to redefine home on many more levels. And that's it. Thanks.